Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Behind the Headlines. I'm Regan King and I'm joined by my friend and co-host for this evening, Alistair Scott. Alistair, good to have you on the program again. It's great to be with you again, yes. Um, I mean, we are thinking of our dear friend and my usual co-host, Simon Barrett, and we ask that you would continue to remember him in prayer. Mm. He has been very unwell. Um, with a severe case of flu since Boxing Day, and uh, you, you've spoken with yeah, him. Yeah, I spoke to him this morning. Yeah, he's not doing well because all all the way through, I said to him, "Look, I'm happy to stand in for you know come work with Regan, but if you're feeling better, I'm happy to stand down. Just say you're going to turn up, but uh, he's not doing well. So, all of you guys who are interceding for Revelation TV and 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 all of the hosts, continue to lift him up. He he will, yeah, God is going to heal him and bring him back." stronger than before. Absolutely. And uh, Simon's influence on this program, though, mm. is felt to a large degree as Simon is the one who initially uh, brought the um, need for us to discuss this story to my attention. I was aware of the uh, background story, mm. had uh, wondered how it could be dealt with in an appropriate and um, sensitive way as it, as it is quite difficult. Um, on, on 1st of January, a Christian cemetery was targeted for acts of vandalism and anti-Christian hate by Orthodox Jewish extremists. Um, the Protestant cemetery on Mount Zion was vandalized with dozens of gravestones, including several crosses, pulled down and smashed. One of the desecrated headstones was a bust of the second Protestant bishop in Jerusalem, Reverend Samuel Gobet. Uh, while the perpetrators have been apprehended, some are expressing concern at the rise of anti-Christian hate crimes and the seeming ambivalence and silence to the problem by the nation's chief rabbis. Now, there are traditions, there are halachic interpretations that can explain some of the fundamentalist attitudes towards Christianity. And on the other side, anti-Semitism shown by professing Christians has not exactly warmed relationships and mm -hmm. has not exactly helped the cause of peace uh, with those Jewish extremists um, more inclined to uh, sh show this type of behavior. But uh, the active desecration of a Christian burial ground is particularly shocking and sad. Um, yes. Alistair, your initial thoughts about this circumstance? I must admit that when I, I, I saw the film before uh, and it was it kind of shocking but, but I think sometimes we have to take our romantic glasses off mm. and realize that Israel is a nation which has every type of person just as U UK does or USA or France or any other nation. It is isn't uh, horrible to see what was going on because it seems like a role reversal of what we've seen in the nations where mm. Jewish cemeteries have been damaged and Routinely. attacked and I, I mean I, I spent time in Ukraine at Lviv uh, which is under attack at the moment which was a huge uh, uh, mm. Jewish town and went through the cemeteries and seen even some of the houses where they used the stones of the Jewish um, uh, cemeteries in their homes you know to build walls and so on so it's horrendous what happened within them but because of that it's so important for in Israel them to understand because of what they suffered let's make sure it doesn't happen against anyone. I mean, we, this is particularly about Christians, it was a Christian cemetery, yeah. but against any group, doesn't matter who they are, you, it, it, are human rights, it's a human rights thing. And I hope and I really pray that, that the uh, authorities will take some action. And as you just said, the rabbis will come up and, and speak for, against what's happened and for doing the right thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you mentioned uh, very rightly that this is something that is seen and experienced uh, mm. by Jews in their own cemeteries and uh, certainly I've been to the Jewish cemetery in Prague and it's had a, a very sad history of similar attacks uh, across France as well. Mm. Uh, this has been reported and there's uh, anti-Semitic graffiti that you occasionally will see in London um, as well and various other places and uh, it, it is uh, a tragic reality, but I'm reminded of the words of Martin Luther King Jr. that um, hate cannot drive out 
hate. And so uh, this is our plea on this program as we ask the question, are uh, Christian freedoms at risk in Israel? Our plea is that those who have a voice would be a voice for Christians there in the Holy Land, that they would uh, realize that this sort of behavior is not going to help the cause of peace in regard to anyone. Now, um, what, one of the interesting features of, of this at the moment, of, of this rise in anti-Christian hate crimes is that we have a return of the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, but on this occasion, he has, as is always the case in an Israeli government, uh, had to form a coalition. Yes. Mm. And in this case, the coalition is in danger of being very compromised and imbalanced by uh, religious uh, far-right right, Jewish yes. extremists. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, uh, Ben Gavir, who is uh, now the incoming Minister of National Security. He is the leader of Atzma Yehudit, which is an extreme Zionist party. Uh, ben Gavir actively has taken part in anti-Arab chants and activities. R reminder to our viewers, mm. Arabs make up 20% of Israel's yes, citizens, yeah. right? And, um, and that many Arabs are very happily citizens of Israel and very good citizens of Israel. This man has been an active um, discouragement to them and um, has not helped the cause of good cohesion uh, between the various factions among Israel's citizens. He has previously participated in a very public tearing up and trashing of a New Testament yeah. as well. Um, as a result of that, as a result of um, various other situations we'll be discussing, Israel's Christians often feel that they are in some way second-class citizens. Here's a CBN News report discussing this latest anti-Christian hate crime. Security camera footage on social media apparently shows two Jewish men wearing kippahs or yarmulkes entering the cemetery. Then they pull over tombstones and damage graves. It has been uh, vandalized in an ongoing way uh, over many years, but several days ago uh, the vandalism was uh, quite severe. At least 30 tombstones were destroyed. Many of those tombstones had crosses. So this was uh, certainly an act of bigotry or anti-Christian vandalism. David Pelegi of Christ Church, part of the Anglican body that runs the cemetery, has seen a rise in acts against Christians over the past few years from a group of religious extremists. We're calling upon the state to take firm action and not only to repair the cemetery, which we think they should do, but at the same time toughen the laws against religious hate crimes. In a statement, Israel's foreign ministry condemned the vandalism, saying, This immoral act is an affront to religion, and the perpetrators should be prosecuted. Since its establishment, the state of Israel has been committed to freedom of worship and religion for all, and will continue this policy. The cemetery is more than 150 years old. Buried here are many generations of Protestant men and women who came from Europe and the United States to serve the people of the Holy Land. We have buried here teachers, doctors, pastors, Bible translators. There's uh, Horatio Spafford who wrote uh, It Is Well With My Soul. There's uh, Bishop Michael Solomon Alexander, the first Jewish bishop in Jerusalem after a gap of almost 1,800 years. Conrad Schick, the first archaeologist and the first town planner, the first architect in Jerusalem. Following this attack, dozens of Israelis organized by Tag Meir visited the cemetery to express their solidarity with the Christians and urge their government to act. I came here today because I'm sad and ashamed to be standing in this very important historic graveyard of people who have built Jerusalem and people who have lived and loved Jerusalem. Their graves were desecrated and this must never happen in any place in the world for any religion and of course not here in the holy city of God. The atrocity has been made by individuals that we don't know how many people give them the back wind but we are here to say if you cannot fight the darkness you're supposed to enrich the light and nourish the light. 
My family arrived in 1809, and here I see tombs from that period, and they probably knew them. And to see the desecration of these tombs by Orthodox Jews is something that's totally unacceptable, very much like it would be unacceptable to see desecration of Jewish tombs in Europe. It is act of hatred, of violence, which has no place in modern Israel, and these are the heritage of the country. Pelagi says in addition to its history, the cemetery is still in use today and has a huge spiritual significance. We take inspiration from the lives of these saints. Their love, their self-sacrifice, uh, their humility, their willingness to spend a lifetime here helping and bearing witness to Jesus, the Messiah, and to remember with gratitude the grace of God and how God used very ordinary, simple human beings often to accomplish His purposes in this country. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Mount Zion Protestant Cemetery, Jerusalem. It's very important to take heed of what Alastair was challenging us with. Every nation has its problems. Every nation, what, what are we? We're all sinners. We've um, all, all our, ourselves, mm. uh, outside of Christ particularly, we see it, we're dead in trespasses and sins. So we live in a fallen world. Yeah. These things are going to happen. It doesn't make them less sad. Um, maybe it should make them less shocking, but I, I think it is particularly jarring to see a symmetry desecrated in this so particular too. way. And also it's so important, I think the thing it should stir us to is pray. Yeah. Pray for these situations because, yeah, I mean we talked about it before, is that there's extremes on the left and the right in every government and every nation. Mm. Uh, but, but so easy, isn't it, for all of us? And I, I'm number one in this, you know, to have an opinion about everything. And yet the Bible never tells us to have an opinion, just tells us to pray into situations. And it actually says to not quarrel over opinions, exactly. doesn't it? Exactly. But what do we do? I mean, would social media exist if there wasn't quarreling over opinions? Exactly. Exactly. That's why social media is, is thriving at the moment because everyone has an opinion and everyone has the freedom to express it. Unless you're a Christian, you're kind of hemmed in a little bit. You can't express too much our Christian thoughts. But, um, you know, I was, I was uh, on another program with uh, people from Africa yesterday and uh, we were looking at Romans 13 about all authority comes from God. And, and I was saying what a challenge that is because, I mean, there are many ungodly, corrupt governments ruling in many nations at the moment and yet it's it, it for some reason that bible passage says all authority comes from god so he's in control and sometimes we we are allowed to see the, the evil in order to appreciate the good and also to pray against those evil situations because that is what the bible tells us to do now there is a particular article um, that has have been very helpful, I think, mm. in um, outlining some of the concerns that we have. Uh, it's by Phaedra Shapiro. Um, she says that Christians in Israel are increasingly the victims of religious radicalism, a trend that must be stopped. And others uh, across Israel, uh, other uh, Christians, have expressed concerns particularly over Israel's new hardline government believing uh, th this to be the most right-wing and nationalistic in the country's history, which is uh, it's saying something in one way because I, a couple of years ago when we were having, uh, as we've had this chaos with the election processes mm. um, in Israel, uh, Naftali Bennett w w would have been s someone that people would have looked at and said, oh, we, we, we don't we don't want him if, uh, because he, he's going to be very nationalistic. Yeah. Well, then he, he was there with Yair Lapid and actually, um, if anything, he lost a lot of his support because he wasn't, um, he, he wasn't catering to those who would be more of the, the ultra-nationalist um, type ilk. But um, what we have in this situation with uh, ben Gvir uh, actively uh, saying things in the past, actively doing things that he knows will stoke tensions between various factions. He's continuing to do that in, in some quite different contexts outside of that, um, which we're looking at um, here. Uh, 
we have to be very clear that Christians, while we can look and we should look and we should love our Jewish neighbors and we should recognize um, the special covenant that God has with the Jewish people, the promises that are enduring His eternal covenant, um, which was there with Abraham and with his descendants, yeah. and we should praise God and never look with arrogance upon um, the Jews, as R Romans, um, the letter of Paul to the Romans reminds us. Uh, w we do have different beliefs. Mm. We believe, Alastair, that Jesus. Jesus is the promised Messiah, is, yeah. and uh, the vast majority of Orthodox Jews do not believe that and are, are quite opposed to that. Um, we, as um, at least predominantly uh, you know, non-Jewish um, blood, uh, would be considered Gentiles, mm -hmm. and there are some very stark things that we can read in uh, rabbinic midrash and uh, interpretations of the law in regard to how we can or should be treated um, by our Jewish neighbors. Um, Maimonides, um, particularly in uh, his um, interpretations, explain that Gentiles with whom we are not at war, um, their death must not be caused, so there, there shouldn't be murder, but it is forbidden to save them if they are at the point of death. If, for example, uh, one of them is seen falling into the sea, <laughs> he should not be rescued, for it is written, Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of uh, thy fellow, uh, but a Gentile is not thy fellow. Quite jarring. Yeah, yeah. But we, we do have to be honest and say, okay, there is this perspective. Christians are not always seen, in fact, very often are uh, um, not at all seen as friends or as fellows or as neighbors mm -hmm. by the Jews. Is that fair? That's definitely fair. And I, I mean, I think this is one of the major concerns. I mean, you and I both have messianic believing mm -hmm. friends in, in the London area or around the country who would love to make Aliyah and go back to live in the nation, but they do not want to deny Christ because, you know, that's part of our gospel. Um, and therefore, it, life has made very difficult for them to return to their homeland where they want to be because of their faith. And I mean, it, it doesn't preclude you if you, uh, if you believed in Buddha or Hinduism or anything else. It's the, the name Jesus, Yeshua, that is the preclusion, the, the, the one uh, line or the red line you cannot cross. And, and a lot of my friends who've, who've applied to, to make Aliyah, when it's come to the filling in of the paper where they says, do you believe that Jesus is the Messiah? They can't say no. Mm. You know, they, they, and a lot of people advise them, say, oh, well, you can, you can just turn around that one and say something, you know, because God knows your heart. But they can't, you cannot deny, because the word is so clear. And so there's no doubt, I think even with this new government, with Netanyahu, I do believe in Netanyahu. I'm, I'm, I'm reading his book at the moment, it's great, it really is an eye-opener. Uh, lots of great information in there. And, and, he, and there's no doubt in this present time in which we live, we need strong governors, Absolutely. we need strong leaders, and he is a strong leader. But as we know, in any coalition that's compromised, and the, the, the danger now, or the risk, as is in the, <laughs> the question we've asked, is that it's going to become even more difficult for messianic believers to return home to be in the land. Because, you know, we talked about this earlier, they're not even seen as being Jews because right. they believe in the Messiah, uh, or they believe in Jesus as the Messiah, not that they believe in the Messiah, because we all believe in the Messiah. So it's a... It's, a, it's going to be a very tough battle for, for Prime Minister uh, Bibi Netanyahu to, to win, but I believe he's more than capable. And again, it, it, it needs a lot of support and prayer and understanding that there is no doubt that, it, that everything about Israel isn't perfect as it isn't in UK or USA or any other nation you can choose. But um, yeah, let's, let's just keep praying and lifting up that government to stand because the, the, the last five years have been ridiculous. Uh, every few months they've had to have a, another election, another election. And, and the compromise that is, they've tried to make has not worked because it's ba basically just paralyzed the nation. Uh, so we need a government that will get things moving again. And do, I do believe we're supposed to contend and confront things that are unrighteous, but in love, not, in, fa uh, not, not in a sort of terrorist manner, but actually in a debate situation, in a talk, in a, in a loving manner. In the aftermath of the jarring scenes of the mm. desecration of that Protestant cemetery there on Mount Zion, the t 
two perpetrators were arrested. There's been widespread condemnation across the international community. As mentioned, even uh, many Jewish commentators are slamming the silence of the chief rabbis across the nation uh, in this regard. Uh, but various Christian leaders have spoken out, and one of the recurring elements uh, seems to be very clear that there is a sense of increase of religious extremism and assault on the free exercise, particularly of Christianity mm -hmm. in the land. These assaults, some leaders said, include attacks against their person, defamation of their churches and symmetries, unwarranted restrictions, and that comes in regard to the government, on um, the attendance and worship and legal threats against their possession and management of church properties. I was able to speak with a Jewish believer in Jesus who um, anonymously um, wanted to share that occasionally the government tries to take land from Christians that they own, in some cases um, land that's been owned by Christians or churches for a couple of centuries. Mm. Uh, there are restrictions or uh, there's the disallowing of development on that land. Repairs to the property are hindered in the hopes that this will then force churches um, uh, or the trustees, whatever officers are over that particular spot uh, to just give up mm -hmm. and hand over um, that property to the government. Um, other Christian leaders have said that such a disheartening atmosphere has led to a lack of hope, especially among our Christian youth who increasingly feel unwelcome in the land where their ancestors have dwelt since even before the birth of the church on Pentecost. Uh, indeed, now, uh, it's very, very stark change in the population of the land. Uh, in the past, the, there would have been double-digit percentages of Christians, um, but now there's only a maximum of 2% who profess Christ in the land mm. uh, of Israel. Uh, my anonymous um, Jewish believer source said that there are Jewish terrorist groups that target Christian groups particularly attacking, fighting, and uh, also burning property. They try to stop baptisms and other Christian ceremonies. Arad is particularly well known in Israel for being a place where extremists are active. Uh, Yad Lachim would send people to my church to harass people going in and leaving, intimidating just after the Sabbath. I got a phone call from an ultra-Orthodox guy threatening to burn down my house. They will say, we know where you live and give you your address. It's scary. Mm. Uh, Jewish believers lose their jobs. Immigrants who are Jewish believers often face pressure. It claims that they are not Jewish because they follow Jesus abound. Mm. You can be a Jew uh, and anything else and welcome not a follower of Jesus. Jesus, exactly what you were saying. Exactly, and I, I, I've experienced that personally when I've been uh, in, in Israel, in Jerusalem, where we've done our conferences and so on for Feast of Tabernacles uh, and, and uh, Passover and so on. And, and they would be people, I mean, we'd use one of the conference centers and they'd be the, the, the kind of uh, Orthodox Jews, ultra-Orthodox Jews who would be out there spotting Mm. spotting to see if any Jewish people do come in and then they would you know obviously be in, inciting them threatening them not necessarily verbally or with a, uh, a gun or anything but but just their presence would be a, a kind of threatening source because they realize it can damage them it's it's no different from Christians in in Pakistan where I work as well uh, they, they do get uh, they get the, the worst of the jobs, least pay for, for doing the same kind of work as a, as a Muslim would do. And you know, when, when I worked in nations like that, the majority of the people uh, are, are just, they just want peace. They just mm. want to live. They want to be able to earn their living. They want to live uh, happily. They are not the terrorist, uh, ultra right, whatever you want to call them, groups. But I mean, fortunately, what's happening in Israel is a minority still. Yes. But it's a minority that could grow. And, and unless it's confronted at this stage by other believers or even nations and leaders of nations, it could go out of hand. And I think, again, it's a little bit like uh, looking at the recent uh, USA uh, pr uh, presidencies and so on. If you are seen to be far right or far left, it seems to open a door 
for uh, antagonistic behavior from those people in that end. So, mm. And I think there's no doubt because and the press, the media has made such a big thing about this being a very far right government. It'll give confidence to those who are sitting in the far right to be terrorist minded in some right. ways. So it's a, it's a danger, but we, we need to be aware of it. Now, there are instances that we can identify of anti-Christian hate, specific mm -hmm. instances that have been well chronicled in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, the famous Church of Loaves and Fishes uh, was burned down. It's been burned down and it's had vandalism um, upon it multiple times. Um, th this goes back, as I said, to 2015. It mm -hmm. suffered severe damage. There was Hebrew graffiti found on the site reading, false idols will be smashed. Um, the church was only 33 years old, but was built on the same site of the first church built to mark the spot uh, where Jesus, of course, performed that great miracle of the loaves and fishes more than um, 1,600 years ago. That was when uh, the original uh, structure was built. It was mm. eventually destroyed. Uh, but then th there was another incident which took place in February of um, 2015. Uh, the Dormiton Abbey found parts of its seminary burned, along with Hebrew hate slogans graffiti on the walls. Messages included death to Christians, death to Arabs, and Jesus is a monkey. Uh, the Abbey, which is located next to the cynical uh, compound that Jews revere as the site of King David's tomb, and uh, which Christians hold as the room of the Last Supper outside the Zion Gate to the Old City has been the site of numerous graffiti attacks in the last decade. In 2014, hours after um, um, Pope Francis celebrated Mass at the Abbey there, arsonists set fire to the compound, causing minor damage to its structure. So uh, it, it's against Protestants, it's against Catholics. They're also managing to fit in uh, death to Arabs there, which r r a reminder to, to viewers, um, that there's a significant Arab Christian population mm -hmm. in Israel um, as well. I have Arab Christian friends who have um, vi visited there and, and they are treated um, at, at times in a way as second-class citizens. Now, a lot of that Alastair stems back to, um, well, it, it's been solidified more in some people's thinking through this uh, nation-state law, which a lot of people expressed when it was introduced in 2018 um, as basically inbuilt discrimination against anyone who is not Jewish. ethnically um, Jewish. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you know of that law? I, th I think it's a, it's a horrendous, just reading that story yeah. and, uh, and thinking of the recent, or not in the last 10 years, decades of recent hi history for, for the Jewish people in the Second World War and so on. Mm. Uh, I, I would think the majority of Jews would be absolutely horrified about this, but you're going to have the, the, the specialist groups or the terrorist groups who, who would be moving in this. Well, the law is, is, is an unfortunate law. It's, an, it's, a, it's not, a, not a good law and it needs to be challenged because it, it does allow um, domination, I guess, of, mm. of Jewish thinking. But, you know, the, the, the one thing that is, is the, Israel's biggest um, source of, uh, of, of bringing forward is, is that it's a democracy. It is probably the only democracy in the Middle East and they need to be behaving and, uh, as a democracy. I, I've been in Israel so many times and I know how, how it is allowed for, for the Muslims to, to, to practice their faith and, and the Christians up, and, and every other faith. But it, there is the, mini the minority group who are trying to stop it and, and therefore laws like this law that was passed in 2018 kind of uh, encourages uh, this, uh, this, well, it, it's an attack on democracy, to be honest, because if you are proclaiming that uh, only, uh, only the Jews have the rights, mm. then that, that's not democracy. It's a, it's a hidden kind of, um, it's not nowhere near a, a true democracy anyway. So, so I think it's a, it's a challenging thing. And it's, as nations, United Nations, us as Christian groups and those in, in, in the nations who have the ear, they do have a certain amount of prominence amongst the the, the uh, government of Israel, we need to be challenging and, and actually showing this is not 
a, a right law to have in the forefront. And, and it, was, it was actually encouraging at the time that there were many Israeli groups, many Jewish mm -hmm. groups that were expressing severe concerns yeah. over the impact of this law. I remember um, I, I was not long married to uh, my wife Rachel who is Israeli and of Jewish background and we were talking just through the ramifications and implications of it and this only solidified that sort of second class citizenship type um, element that many um, Arab and Christian and other minority Druze um, in individuals in Israel um, ha have a feeling of mm -hmm. where th there's um, an air of suspicion perhaps or there's um, mistreatment in some cases there is we, we have to acknowledge it where it's there sometimes people make a, a bigger deal out of it than mm -hmm. um, that then it's actually present but discrimination does exist um, there are um, believers Jewish believers in Jesus who uh, will lose their jobs when people find out that their followers uh, mm -hmm. of Jesus uh, and that's just that's not right we value freedom in this nation. We value um, democracy. We value freedom of speech and freedom of religion. We should value the same mm. when it comes to um, the nation of Israel, which is in the esteemed privileged position of being the only healthy functioning democracy mm -hmm. in the entire Middle East. Yeah. So we, we should continue to encourage them to aspire to uh, that standard, to um, uphold those uh, particular freedoms. That's because when you think of the call on Israel, going back to the days of Abraham, it's really called to be a light to the nations. That's right. And you know, even even when you think about uh, Saul, the days of Saul, when when suddenly the, the 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 Israelites were calling for a king so that we can be like the other nations. That's never been the plan of God for Israel and the Jewish people. They are to be uh, the nations are to be like them in having the fear of the Lord, understanding God. Being, I mean, when you read the Old Testament, the 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 instructions on how they should behave towards the foreigner in the land is not always adhered to at the moment from the, the stories we're just talking about. And, and I think that that needs to be a reminder to the Jewish people that truly you are called to be a light to the nations. You are called to be uh, treat other nations and other groups of people in the right way. Whether, whether you accept the Yeshua messianic side of it, that it's the freedom of, of expressing yourself, mm. believing what you want to believe, not having to believe a certain way. But this is the other problem with the coalition government. There are compromises that have to be made in order to remain in power. And certainly that, that law passed in 2018 would have been one of those compromises. And what tends to happen with a law, once it's been there for a while, no one even comes back to look at it again. Mm. Uh, and, and it really needs to be removed. I mean, there's some plenty of laws in our nation that need to be removed. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm not talking out of yeah. we are the perfect state. But, but I think unless uh, we need to do that as, as UK citizens in UK confront our leaders that there are certain laws that need to be removed. Mm -hmm. And I think the same needs to happen in Israel, that some of these things that have been passed in order to stay in power need now to be turned around into a different, a different ruling. Concerns at the time were expressed by Christian <laughs> citizens, by Arab citizens, by Druze citizens. Um, uh, this was one comment that the discriminatory law directly contravenes the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 181 as well as Israel's own Declaration of Independence. The first, the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 181, guaranteed the establishment of a Jewish state while ensuring full civil rights to the Arabs living therein. And in the second, the founders of the country clearly and unequivocally committed to foster its development for the benefit of all its inhabitants and to ensure complete equality of social and political rights to all, irrespective of religion, race, or sex. Which, um, in, in some ways, it succeeded in doing. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, you could make the case, even, even as, as Christians just t talking about um, this situation and, and, and others, what we've often looked at Israel and said it, it's a very interesting nation in that it has the, these religious ideals and, and views and beliefs and un, underpinning and stuff, mm. yet at the same time it, it also socially is very un-Jewish and, and very un-Christian yeah. um, in its approach. So there's 
uh, in some ways, and that, that points, I think, also to some of the complexities with coalitions, you have extreme religious yeah. elements pulling one way, yeah. extreme leftist elements pulling another way, and it leaves the vast majority of the population feeling a bit traumatized and mm. torn um, as to okay, where, where's, where's the nation headed. Economically, Israel struggles. Um, and um, in recent years, that's improved somewhat with uh, more normalization of relationships uh, with its Arab neighbors through mm -hmm. the Abraham Accords, yes. something we can um, give uh, much thanks for, um, definitely. But there's a long way to go. There definitely is, and, and I mean, this, uh, the Abrahamic Accords is something that uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister, definitely has strong in his heart to increase those relationships outside, uh, and and it it's, it is great what they're doing. But like any nation, you know, we, we almost talk, expect a perfect nation that everything would be absolutely right and and uh, righteous for everyone, and that's what God's looking for. Righteousness exalts a nation. We know that. But in Israel, there's the same kind of biases that we would have in this nation. Uh, hopefully, they're in some kind of control. But I think, yeah, they're certainly in a... We, we've had a coalition government not so long ago. It's mm -hmm. a decade or so ago. And it, it, it's very hard to, to work in that situation. And uh, government needs to have its strong ideas and be able to push it through. But when you're compromising with people, as you say, from the far right, religious groups who are, and you know you need them in order to stay in power, mm. you've got to give way. And uh, that's, that's a sad part of a coalition government. It, um, as we have been talking a little bit about some of these cases, mm. Uh, I, I want to go back to that situation at the Dormerton yeah. Abbey. Uh, it's fascinating, the aftermath of it. So um, th this event re related to um, 2015 an attack on uh, this particular Roman Catholic um, institution. And it, there were two far-right Jewish activists who were arrested in the aftermath of that. They were indicted on a series of crimes, including membership in a terror organization. And we have to say unequivocally, um, just as there are pseudo-Christian extremists and, and terror groups, I mean, yeah. you know, as someone who lived in the south of the United States and, mm. and has seen the impact there, the KKK was a pseudo-Christian terror yeah. organization. It, it tragically was founded by um, individuals who professed Christ. Yeah. Can't say anything other than that. Uh, they, but they, they weren't. Christian as such, um, uh, Islamic extremists. Um, we, we had that and we rightly condemn uh, Islamic extremism and fundamentalism. Uh, there also are and have been Jewish extremists who you can go all the way back to the time of Jesus where you have the Zealots. Simon the Zealot was uh, one of the apostles and you, you study about the Zealots and you think, okay, this guy would have been the antithesis of what Jesus was standing for. When he said, my kingdom is not of this yeah. world. When he told Peter to put down his sword, Simon would have instinctively been there right with. Picking up the sword. Exactly. These guys were cloak and dagger. That's yeah. where it comes from. Yeah, that's the their term. training. So, um, you know, you, you then go fast forward to uh, the time of the British Mandate and it was very common to have um, various terror groups that were um, seeking to, um, to take away from um, the, the British control, even though there was a progress towards, with the Balfour Declaration, an independent state of Israel, they were wanting to force and push certain uh, things in, in various directions. Um, th these two guys were found guilty of being a part of a Jewish terror organization and were um, being charged with vandalizing this prominent Jerusalem church. Uh, but it's interesting that the charges were dropped. They were thrown out uh, by the Lord District, uh, the Lord District Court. Mm. And uh, they threw out the confessions that were made by uh, the young men. It was upheld, it was, it was indicated that there was uh, <coughs> perhaps some duress that these suspects were put under by Shin Bet, the security mm -hmm. service who um, were leading this. They criticized the decision to throw out um, the case. Uh, it, we have to say that at its core, generally speaking, there is uh, an element of 
uh, the Jewish legislature, which is keen to preserve democracy, there is a, um, an element of uh, uh, among the Jewish politicians are keen to protect the interest of all. Yeah. But um, as I believe we've talked about in a previous program in regard to the um, re recent elections, uh, some of the things that need to change are more grassroots. Mm. The courts, the judges, these can be very affected by um, the uh, extreme elements yeah. of um, um, various rabbis and, and, and whatnot. Uh, there can be a lot of corruption as well. Stuff we undoubtedly have here um, also. But it, what I found very interesting, Alistair, is that the uh, attorney for the two suspects yeah. who had confessed um, there was evidence for them being involved in this anti-Christian hate crime, their attorney was Itmar Ben Gavir. Oh my, okay. So it, it, the, the man who is now um, the core Kennedy. part of this coalition Kennedy. alongside Benjamin Netanyahu, at the time only just beginning to branch into uh, politics, mm -hmm. running as a candidate on the Union of Right Wing Parties slate um, as a second representative at the time of the uh, Atzma Yahudi Party, which is an extremist, um, uh, an extremist party. Well, he's obviously going to be an interesting case for being in the leadership, being on the cabinet there, because he has got his extreme views, there's no doubt about mm. it. I, I mean, I, I know we talked earlier about the, the burning of the, the uh, New Testaments and so on that happened some years ago, and he yeah. claims that was when he was a young man and he's changed his ways. And of course, that's very easy to say, um, but the proof is in the pudding, as they say. And, and you know, even talking about this, the, the case of the two men he defended, and they were th therefore released from from uh, being tri uh, the, the trial anyway. We've got these two young men. We've just seen the clip earlier in the cemetery. And yeah. these days, because of the, uh, because of the whole filming of every event, it's very clear. You couldn't say, "Oh, it wasn't me. It was somebody else," uh, because the, the pictures are so clear. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be an interesting case to see see whether this comes to a court and whether they do get some kind of sentence or is it just going to be slid under the carpet because I think it's, it's important for a government to do what is right uh, legally even according to their own laws and not just to to turn the blind eye because they are your orthodox Jews or the ultra orthodox Jews and they have friends in high places because their friends are on the cabinet. Mm. Uh, but the, the, for the government to survive and for the nation to be respected it has to do what is legally right, well godly right of course but uh, what is right according to the laws of the land. So this is going to be quite an interesting case to follow up in the next few weeks and see what happens, because it was only last, last week, June the first, uh, January the 1st, when this incident occurred. Uh, and now, we have seen since then mm. prominent voices, many prominent voices yeah. in Israel raising criticism of uh, that despicable event, including President Herzog, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Jerusalem District Police Commander. And that's been encouraging to uh, see them being very unequivocal in yeah. their condemnation of it. Um, we saw that video early, early on where uh, the leader at um, Christ Church, David Pelegi, is yeah, okay. saying that they need to um, take basically take action and also help with the repair um, of, of the damage. Uh, I'm sure those those are complicated discussions, and I'm not I'm not certain that the lack of financial aid in helping repair, um, if, if that's what's going to happen, um, would indicate any anti-Christian bias. I mean, we have to look at insurance issues and responsibility mm -hmm. and who, whose is it, but it certainly would be a goodwill gesture if it there was um, a, an some opportunity, help. isn't it, for this government to, to do something and, and be seen to be doing something right, and uh, let's, let's hope they follow that line. Uh, now, w one of um, the commentators on this, Vaidra Shapiro, in her article um, said uh, that specifically she is concerned at the voices, uh, or rather the missing voices of the chief rabbis of Israel. She comments, now look, I'm not actually so naive as to expect them to speak out. I'm quite aware of the religious and halakhic ambivalence about the Christian presence in Israel, i.e. It's, it's unwanted mm. um, and, uh, by many, and our chief rabbis have some particular histories of controversial statements and equally controversial silences. Sadly, what we've created is a state that is increasingly Jewish and democratic in a parallel sense, where each receives their own spheres rather than in a mutually enriching sense. I desperately wish that I could say that this crime is exceptional, that nothing like this happens usually in Israel. 
Sadly, that just isn't the case. Christians in Israel are increasingly the victims of religious radicalism, a trend that must be stopped. Freedom of religion isn't enough. Until we begin to expect more from our Israeli rabbis in the service of Israeli democracy, protection of minorities and forging a moral path for the Jewish future, some will feel emboldened to translate that religious ambivalence into active hate crimes. This is not only immoral, it sends a dangerous message to our Jewish youth, to the diaspora and to Christians around the world. The unsaid speaks volumes. Some very helpful, I think, words of mm. challenge there from um, that particular right, Jewish commentator. Shapiro, it's, it's great that there are voices like that being heard and, and it's very important for them to continue to be heard. Uh, it's funny because just before the Christmas uh, break here, they, down, down the coast in Worthing, the Jewish community were lighting for Hanukkah, they were lighting the, can, can, the, the uh, lamps outside the oh, wow. old town house. And we went down to support that because yeah. we'd heard about it and we got an invitation. So I took a group from, the, from our church, we're not so far away in Horsham in Sussex, and we went down and we had such good time with the, with the rabbis from, uh, from, from Brighton and, and, and around the area and great conversations. And, and they were so uh, accepting uh, mm. our love and, 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 and so pleased that we came to support them. And you know, we said, we, we love you guys. We're praying for, 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 for your, your, your synagogues and your people. And, and this is what we need. We had great conversations. They, they didn't despise the fact that we were Jewish belie uh, Jesus believers and we weren't kind of trying to convert them into becoming messianic. We were standing alongside them and just showing them our love. And this is what we need to see more happening mm. in Israel. You know, we're not forcing you to change your, your stand, but stand with the people who think slightly differently from you. I right. mean, we have the same root. Our Hebraic roots is what we uh, acknowledge as, as, as an, in our Christianity. And it's so important to have closer companionship, relationship in order to actually get closer as a people. <clears throat> One of the struggles I have, Alistair, when mm. visiting various parts, um, I personally, I, I prefer the Jewish areas because I find they're less inundated with um, a lot of the commercialism of um, Roman yes. and Eastern yes. um, in interpretations of Christianity. I, I don't like all of the images and, um, and, and whatnot and some of the stuff that goes on with that. So mm. I really love the Old Testament sites. But in, in Jerusalem, as you're wandering around, you have a very tangible sense, a, a different sense as you enter each respective area. And I, th I think Shapiro hits it on the head here mm. when she says that each receives their own spheres rather than in a mutually enriching sense. You have these distinct quarters where you feel tangibly different. different. For sure, yeah. yeah. And um, you, 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 in, in, in one area you, you realize, okay, we're walking into this quarter now and there's a particular way you're treated. We're walking into this quarter now, there's a particular way you're treated. And, and, and tragically, I, I do think there's a measure in which it can be said that each views the other with suspicion and distrust. Yeah, yeah. And each has experienced from the other reason um, or, or uh, has experienced um, circumstances, events, or even assault that, that have created and inflamed that distrust. Yeah, I mean, I give. felt exactly the same when you walk around Jerusalem, even if you didn't know you were going from one quarter to another, you'd know because of the inner feelings. Uh, but, but it is something that needs to be broken down because, I, you know, we all believe in, well, we do believe in Yeshua, Jesus as the Savior, the Savior of the world, the Son of God and all those things. But we're never going to win any converts by condemnation, by arguments, by fights, by extremism. But if we can get into conversations and, and show the love we have for them, the respect. Mm. Respect is an important word, isn't it? Respect them for what they believe and, and do everything you can in a loving way to get them to see your side of, of, of why you believe what you believe in order that, you know, that's what the Spirit of the Lord says. He will bring the conviction. We just need to bring the, the, the acknowledgement or the, the choice, you know, when you're getting somebody in the street. I can't convert anybody, but I can give them an alternative choice, a choice to make. And it's, it, I think this has got to be the way ahead in Israel, in Jerusalem particularly, that these four quarters actually start to respect one another meet together, pray for one another. 
in whatever faith you may be. Despite the challenges being faced, the call mm -hmm. of many Christian leaders, particularly to younger Christians who may be feeling disillusioned or in some way unwelcome in, in the land of, of their birth, um, offer this statement. We offer the incarnational message of Christ's birth as a beacon of hope reminding us all that our Lord continues to suffer both with us and for us, leading us to new life in the light of His risen glory. And moreover, with the larger body of Christ forming our Savior's arms and legs in the world, our churches continue to offer places of solace, strength, and support through their worship services, ministries of education and health care, pilgrimage centers, opportunities for meaningful employment. Um, and, and so th there's this call to young Christians particularly may be feeling a bit disillusioned with their mm. place in Israel to stay and to uh, pursue peace, to pursue um, that change. That change will not come unless God's people um, stand up and reflect even in difficult trying times on uh, the light of Christ. We see throughout the uh, Bible particularly in um, the New Testament um, the followers of Christ who they were exactly as, as you indicated there. They were showing love to those around them. They were caring for the weak, for the vulnerable, mm -hmm. for the oppressed, for those who were despised. And there were many who were coming to faith in Christ as a result. Yes. And I, I think perhaps it would be um, a wise thing for Christians in um, the Holy Land to um, to steer clear of the politics that are surrounding the whole situation and to get to the point, the main principle, um, the power of powers, Jesus, mm -hmm. who is Messiah, mm -hmm. showing and reminding that th this is the hope, uh, showing Christ uh, in you so that others might be won and drawn mm -hmm. um, by that light shining in and through you. Exactly. Also, we're entering the last couple of minutes of mm. the program. Any final thoughts from you? Yeah, I, th I, th I think it's, a, it's an important time. I've said this before that we do um, pray for these governments in, in Israel that um, extremism is not going to dominate and uh, truth will come through because Jesus, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we want to see uh, a government which is uh, truly democratic but also not compromising to that stage where it's, uh, it's, it's so one-sided. It's so, uh, it becomes like almost <clears throat> any of the other nations that surround them that was, is only looking after its own. So uh, it, Israel needs to stand up as a democracy and make sure people who are doing this desecration of uh, cemeteries are dealt with in the right way. And, um, and yeah, I, I can see this is a time, this year ahead is going to be a, a testing time. But we need to be a people of prayer, interceding for those governments, as we do for our own government too. And certainly as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that's what's in, entailed to, uh, to a large degree uh, in this. It's not just for one particular faction or that's one right. particular right. grouping. It involves everyone coming together in, in so, some degree and working together for a common good. But with all of that in mind, uh, this serves as a reminder that we live in a fallen world mm -hmm. where um, we cannot escape, regardless among our friends or our foes, there's going to be corruption, there's going to be uh, problems, there's going to be acts of evil, there are going to be things that really um, rend our hearts, that um, provoke us to tears, that um, may even provoke us uh, to anger. Uh, but I want us to take a step back from that and to um, take this as an opportunity um, to pray in line and in step with the Spirit in uh, the light of the Word of God through His servant Paul um, to the church um, believers in Rome that there is a remnant. Um, all Israel will be saved. Let's pray mm. uh, that the Jews will come to see their Messiah, yeah. Yeshua, <clears throat> who is Messiah. Let's pray that they would come to know that peace that's found in Him and in Him alone. Uh, let's pray for the state of Israel and for its well-being and that of all of its citizens. Bless you all. We'll look forward to seeing you next time on Behind the Headlines.